third, my takeaway was of unity. Um, some of you may be very familiar with Anglicanism, some of you may not be, but in Anglicanism, you've always had some streams. There's two central streams historically in Anglicanism. One is a strong Catholic stream, we are Catholic, and one is a more strong Reformed evangelical stream, we are Reformed and we are evangelical. And sometimes those streams have uh, never ever crossed. So in a place like England, um, you've got a very strong sort of evangelical movement, you have a somewhat strong Anglo-Catholic movement, it's got more and more liberal over the years. Um, but you won't see the evangelicals, uh, you know, prancing about in Chasuble, for example, like you see a resurrection, you won't see that across. My brother's overly influenced by the evangelical movement, but that's what I'm just Okay, just kidding. Just a joke. Um, so anyway, uh, we can just like edit that part right then. Yeah. I, oh, I talked to Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But, but, but what, what you've had is real tension. What you had at GAFCON was evangelicals and Anglo-Catholics working hand in hand saying we're both under the word of God. We both believe in the mission of the church, and it was an incredible thing to see. So you've got, you know, Anglo-Catholic bishops all dressed up in their, you know, you know, bright red, pink cassocks, you know, purple cassocks walking around next to bishops in golf shirts, and they're working together discussing things. That is hardly ever seen. There was a unity there that was very deep, and he had the unity of the nations. Um, so you truly have the nations working together. Uh, Bishop Duncan is one of the key leaders of the American uh, new work that's, that's developing, and Duncan's put it this way. In the 17th century, you have what was the Elizabethan settlement to bring together the different Anglican sort of threads within the Church of England. And she, she brought those together in a kind of a brilliant the via media, sort of, you know, the, the middle way word, work. What Duncan is saying is that we had the Elizabethan settlement in the 16th, 17th century, we now have a global settlement. It's a wonderful phrase, I think. It's a global settlement. Well, now the nations are coming together in council, led by our bishops, but all together, lay all the way up in council together. It's a global settlement. There are not many traditions doing this. Rome does this uh, probably better than anyone. Although Anglicanism is a close second in terms of bringing the nations together like this. It's really unbelievable. And that was a big part of the unity piece. Um, the other takeaway, number four, was continuity. A strong sense of continuity to our roots is Anglicanism. Once again, nobody's leaving Anglicanism. A continuity to the early teachings of the church, and primarily to the scripture. That's really important, something old and something new. Um, and so, so there's a great sense of the stream that's poured forth from this. It's really important to remember, the Archbishop of Canterbury in the 60s and early 70s, Michael Ramsey, taught that the Church of England is first and foremost not an established Church of England. He really fought this. And he was an establishment guy. But the Church of England is the church, the apostolic church, on English soil. That in the providence of God he used to spread out through missionary endeavors throughout the nations. But it's the church. It's the apostolic church expressed on English soil. So you all are first and foremost connected not to the Archbishop of Canterbury, but to the biblical witness, which began to crop up 3rd century, 4th century. We know there were English, British bishops involved in Nicaea, 4th century. So Ramsey's saying, look, before you ever had the Archbishop of Canterbury, before you had the 700s, 800s seat of Augustine of Canterbury set up, there was already Christianity there. And you're just tapping into the ancient Christian reality. It has a future, and it's, it's, it's ancient future Christianity. Okay. Finally, uh, and then I'll conclude, is uh, the fifth takeaway um, was mission. And uh, mission was at the heart of everything we talked about. And mission in that wonderful kind of three flavored, you know, Sunday delight of mission. You've got evangelism, where we're just saying very clearly, folks need to get saved. People who don't know the Lord are facing a Christless eternity, right? They're facing hell. That's a reality. Let's be honest about it. We have to evangelize. We have to reach people who don't know Jesus. That was totally clear. Evangelism. Number two, multiplication. We've got to start new works. And the cross is bringing about this resurrection. We're extremely committed to this. But we're all like junior varsity. I mean, like, you, you meet these guys who are in Australia, and the way that they're church planting at such remarkable numbers. Or you meet the Nigerians who stopped planting churches, now they plant dioceses. <laughs> All right? I mean, so one of my close uh, friends who was a priest that I spent time with five years ago when I was in Nigeria is now a missionary bishop who's been given the charge, go plant a whole diocese. And this is unbelievable. It, it is electric, and it's happening throughout the communion. I think Kenya does a very similar thing, as does Rwanda, as does Uganda, Tanzania, a little less so. 
So you have this incredible multiplication passion. And the Holy Spirit loves that. Acts 13, I think you guys just heard about that from those preaching. I mean, it's all about laying hands on and sending out, which is exactly what we did with Bo Molly five years ago. Okay, so multiplication. And then third, the mission uh, note was very clear that we love and we serve the underserved. We love and we serve the marginalized. We love and we serve the poor. We love and we serve those who are afflicted with onerous disease. We love and serve those who are suffering in places like the Sudan. Uh, you know, it's all over the Congo, um, places in, in Asia. Um, we're undergirding that work and we're loving them and we're wearing a bunch of sleeves and pins and we're involved in that work. So that note of mission is also very strong. So as you guys can tell, I, I came away um, as a leader extremely encouraged. Um, what's next, well, very likely the next thing that's next uh, will be a GAFCON primates meeting in August. So these seven primates will gather to pray and consider. Uh, another commitment that they made in the GAFCON statement is that a province for North America, Canada, and states together will be raised up. And that's kind of the next big step. And that'll probably take 30 years to work out. So we're we'll just going to settle down. You know, the, the, they'll move quickly on that, but it's going to take decades to work out. So, you know, it's my kids that'll, that'll probably lead in more of an established American work. We'll, we'll all be helping to develop it and build it by playing churches and reaching people far from God, serving the poor. Um, so anyway, 